Hi guys and welcome to a real-time uh, Copic coloring video where I'm gonna color some pumpkins and a mermaid. The pumpkins are actually my own digital design, my own digital stamps. They are, it's so much fun and I'm so super excited to be able to bring you these. Um, I couldn't find the right size of pumpkins that I wanted for my creation, so I actually created my own and then I made it a printable which you can buy over on my Etsy store. It is in the description so you can get it. These are the different sizes and um, the different kinds of pumpkin. There is seven different pumpkins uh, in four different sizes. So we're going to start here off by coloring up one of the pumpkins. This is one of the smaller pumpkins um, or taller pumpkins. It's actually one of the biggest sizes. It is the biggest size, but um, it's one of the taller ones. Um, I'm using the same colors I'm using for, for the mermaid's hair. So the color combination is actually picked from the auburn hair that the mermaid has and it is one of those color combinations that I get drawn to every fall. I really love auburn hair and auburn hair in combination with other oranges always makes me so happy. So I start off by adding some darkness to the um, kind of creases, just the top and the bottom corner creases. Um, because it makes it look um, a little bit more shaped. I also added it into the creases in, in like behind it. Uh, then I went in with, so I started with e, E18, then I took E09 and spread those a little bit. I added a slight little rim uh, on top of the pumpkins uh, and I also added, um, yeah, where the um, where these little bumps are, the back side of the pumpkin is, and that is so that uh, you see a difference between the back of the pumpkin and the front of the pumpkin. Uh, I know don't know how realistic having a rim light there is. However, it helps to separate the dark areas and help you see that there are bumps in the back and bumps in the front. Uh, when you're working with black lines like we have here, that is important when you color something black, but it's not as important when you color something as an orange pumpkin. However, it does give you that extra, extra oomph. However, if you are coloring this as a no line uh, stamp, you would print it for like 25% opacity or something like that, uh, then you would uh, really need to think about that rim light because then you don't have that black line of the stamp to uh, separate the two pieces. So then you need to do that with the help of light, uh, shadow and darkness. Uh, so if you wouldn't have added that little rim light on top, uh, those back bumps would kind of just go together with the rest of the stamp. I also went in here with a colorless blender because I colored outside the lines and I can tell you I color, colored a lot outside of the lines when I colored these pumpkins uh, and also on the mermaid and I think I just had one of those days. Uh, I have had some increased migraine lately and that makes my hands a little bit shaky so then I kind of color outside the lines. It happens, it happens to the best of us, you know? Yeah. So this is the second pumpkin. This is one of the more chunky ones, kind of uh, a little bit wider. And I can tell you, I love this as a smaller size to add when I add made the little composition of, sta of, of uh, pumpkins. Uh, and in the set of pumpkins, you get the seven pumpkins 
all in four different sizes, but you also get a couple of compositions. So already stamps that are already put together. They are all in PNGs, so they have a see-through background, but the pumpkins itself are actually white, which makes it possible to layer them so you can make compositions. If you have a photo editing software like Photoshop or similar, you can just layer them and move them around and make your own compositions. Or you can do as I did with the card for that I did with these colorings. And that was actually um, color each pumpkin separately, do that little white, cut them out with a little white edge. You don't even need the, that white edge. And then you just add them on top of each other. The only thing you miss there is that the shadow, uh, you will you you would want to kind of stagger them in different heights with the help of, of like foam tape or something to get a natural shadow from the paper that falls on the next pumpkin um while if you have a composition that is already done and you then just color that composition you would add those shadows in when you color the com compositions if if that makes makes sense uh, I did the same thing with the rim light on this pumpkin. Uh, I'm adding a little bit less uh, of the dark colors and a little bit more of the lighter colors for this pumpkin. Uh, this was the second one. The previous one was the first one. And um, then I hadn't really decided, but because it is in the back, um, the it didn't matter if it was very, very light or very, very dark. Uh, while this is going to be a little bit more in the forefront, so then you want to kind of think a little bit more about how you shadow your pumpkin and and so on. In this case, I just, um, just try to shape the different um, the different pieces or apartments. I don't know what is a piece of a pumpkin. I used to see a pumpkin as a uh, as a as a fruit with creases on. Is that how we think about it, or is this a vegetable? It is a pumpkin. It's a squash, and a squash is a cucumber. So shouldn't the pumpkin be a vegetable? Yeah, it's probably a vegetable, not a fruit. Sorry, uh, but yeah. Then I'm just uh, kind of blending everything together on my pumpkin. Um, I do go over my pumpkins multiple times. Uh, that is to build up a little bit more coloring. Uh, just building up the shadowing, but also trying to reduce the amount of um, like help with the blending mostly. Uh, I you can see with this specifically here, you're so much aware that the Y16 and the Y18 didn't really blend that good. And I think it is because I was very slow when I was kind of figuring out how to color this pumpkin. I got quicker and quicker with each pumpkin that I was coloring. So uh, the quicker I get, um, the easier it is to blend. And that is also every layer that I do, I get quicker and quicker. And because of that, it is easier and easier to blend those layers together. Um, so yeah. And I really want to try the 110 pound paper. This is the 80 pound paper from Hammer Mill. And I want, want to try the 110 because I think it allows for more layers because it is thicker. So uh, the ink can kind of uh, seep deeper in the to the paper, allowing me to make a little few more layers uh, on the cardstock. But yeah, I finished off by making a little green um, end thing. I have no clue what that's called. Anyhow, now onto the mermaid. So I wanted to show you how I stamped the mermaid. I inked it up first, and then I went in with a stamp chamois and just uh, carefully dotted off the inner parts of the eyes. This makes it possible for me to give her kind of the anime eyes where you have um, the pupil being in the same color but a darker tone of that color uh, as the rest of the eye. Uh, I, I really like that. And now my kitty decided to lay on my mouse, so 
hopefully this didn't didn't get all all muddly uh, anyhow uh, she's very like I want to cuddle with you right now and I'm just want to make this voiceover sorry <laughs> kitty paws uh, anyhow for the face for my little mermaid I'm using my standard kind of uh, light skin tones and I actually have a reason for this this time and that is because I wanted her to have a brown tail this is a full mermaid so I didn't want to give her those pastel greens and pinks and all of those things I wanted her to be a full mermaid so uh, I am going to have a brown tail on my full mermaid and those colors that I use there is the same kind of color tones as I would have used in my darker skin tone uh, also I don't like blending too many different earth tones in one image uh, mostly because all earth tones uh, most earth tones have a uh, tone in them they are either going into the bluish greenish or into the reddish tones and I don't want to have too many red tones of the browns or too many um, other tones um, the E40s are the ones that are a little bit different they have a very very neutral earth tone so those I can usually combine with another set of earth tones also the skin tones are so light so there you can go also for multiple uh, tones um, I add uh, as I usually do the little shadow between her eyes um, this is a thing that is actually picked up from babies. If you look at a baby, a baby usually have a little button nose. Um, they have their eyes are kind of bigger towards their head um, or towards their face than uh, for a grown up. Basically, their eyes are the size they're supposed to be and will be when they're grown up but the rest of the face will kind of grow as you get older especially your nose and your ears because they keep on growing your whole life they never stop growing um so uh but if you look at an image of a baby you will see that instead of having the bridge of your nose so very apparent as you have on an adult person um, the bridge is almost hidden by this little bump in the face between the eyes so that is where i have picked that up and i really feel that um it brings um some more of that child childish tones uh, in it. Also I make that little button nose again because children have small noses and I like making small noses um, and then um, I just uh, kind of blend in from the sides. I don't blend so much from the bottom up um, on the cheek because it, it gets can get very muddy if you take too much from uh, under the chin too much color under the chin and also you want to have that little rim light uh, to um, between your the, the chin and the back of the hair and and also the neck just to build up a little bit more contrast I have started to go in when I do the body to not use the EO4 which usually is my darkest color and just go in uh, with the rest of the tones that I'm using. This is to reduce the contrast on the body and therefore build a, a kind of make you be drawn into the face more than just the, the body uh, and usually the body is, um, is smaller than the head and, and so on on these kind of cute uh, chibi characters uh, I use uh, R32 and R30 for my pinks uh, so I add kind of a good chunk of R32 uh, on her cheeks and then I blend that out I also add a little bit of R30 on her nose and on the tip of her arms 
um, and I blend that out with the E50. Uh, those are places where we have a little bit more of uh, subsurface scattering where you see the blood vessels a little bit more so that kind of makes the character come alive a little bit. For her face I am doing the B60 and the B63 for the eyes uh, just as shadow accents. Uh, this kind of builds up uh, the eyeball a little bit. I did go in a little bit too hard with the B63 just around um, the kind of the dip in the eyes where we have that little soft pink thing. So uh, in the future I'm gonna try not to use B63 at all at that area because it got very very obvious um, on these eyes. For the eyes themselves, I started off with G09 and then realized that that was way too light to have as a pupil. So I'm going in with G29 for the pupil and then I blend that out with G19, which is a slightly lighter color, even though they're both nines. Um, the 19 is a little bit lighter uh, than the um, the 19 is a little bit lighter than the 29 and the 09 is also a little bit lighter than both of the other two so then I just use those to gradually build up a really big eye. Um, I actually added a little bit more of, of that color than I usually do because I wanted to have more eye and less eye white so sort of. For the hair uh, I'm using my absolute favorite auburn hair color and that is actually the same color combination that I use on my pumpkins and uh, I've chosen to go with that both for the pumpkins and for the hair for a trillion reasons. Well the first one was that I really wanted her to have auburn hair. A full mermaid should have auburn hair was kind of my idea. Um, and, and then I didn't want to go in with other oranges because if I would want to go for a more of a lighter orange for my pumpkins I would go for maybe um, the yellows, the Y35, the Y38, the uh, Y18 even, maybe a Y19. Um, those would be kind of my go-to colors for my pumpkin. Um, but I didn't want to have a very light pumpkin and also I wanted it to kind of mesh more with the auburn So I decided to use the same pens for both. However, the amount of color from the different uh, pens was what kind of uh, made the difference for the auburn hair I first of all used quite a lot of the E18 because the E18 is a very beautiful brown and it makes it look a little bit more more brown <laughs> the hair than, than orange. So I'm adding a lot more of that. I also add a lot more of that behind her. So where the hair is kind of a little bit covered by the rest of the hair, um, just by her neck and so on, I use a little bit more of that because then it feels like that hair is further away and the front hair is closer to you. So that's why I'm, I'm coloring that way. Um, but also adding it in just to keep that kind of more brownness auburn instead of a more orange hair. Uh, with the pumpkins, I used a very, very little of the E18, very selectively, just in these little crease corners, just to um, have that deeper color, that contrast, but not bring in the brown too much. My next color is the E09. Um, E09 and E08 are brown colors but they're very very red brown colors so that is where I kind of build start building up uh, the depth in the hair um, can you build in the shadows adding more of it blending out some of that E18 E18, E09 and e, uh, E08 blends wonderful I love using them 
but they're pretty dark all of them so to get a really auburn hair without it looking too brown i usually use uh one or two of the oranges to kind of just give that uh, shine a little bit more light with the pumpkins both eo8 and eo9 was also used pretty scaring scaringly uh, the eo9 was mostly in the creases while the eo8 started shaping the pumpkin itself um, so there you use very little of it so you still keep that the bigger part of it being orange and then your eye thinks oh the pumpkins is orange while here as i said i'm using them much more and just um leaving the slightest slightest of whites here and there to be filled with the oranges um, and then your eye will feel oh this is auburn it's a beautiful auburn um, and the tone you use the most which is usually which usually is the middle tone i i would say that i use the middle tone maybe 40 percent and then I use the other tones like 15% each, something like that, or kind of 20% uh, of the ne next to the middle tone, and then like 10% uh, of the really dark, dark, darks. Um, but the mid tone, when you use it a lot, that is kind of what your eye will feel is okay this is the real tone of the characters and then you have the lights as the highlights and the darks as the shadows but your eyes will see that the the tone there that you use the most that is what we want to depict as the natural tone so in the hair that would be the eo8 because that is what i used the most while with the uh, why, uh, with, uh, with the pumpkins I used the YR18 and YR16 the most and therefore the body would feel that that is the most uh, but yeah so uh, that is kind of how I use the oranges I do end up using the same oranges for her eyebrows um, mostly because I like doing that making a um, the eyebrows and the hair kind of look good together uh, sometimes I forget and I just use a brown tone for the eyebrows and realize what I've done and then I'm like yeah but she, she had her hair dyed um, using pinks and purples for the hair and for the eyebrows it's kind of fun it's kind of fun but today it was all auburn so for the tail uh, the tail is going to be brown as I said, it's the same colors I use for the face or similar colors. I think for the hair, I usually use the 50s also. Here, I, or for the skin, I use the 50s uh, also. Here, I just use the E30s, um, the 35, uh, 33, 37, and 35. Um, just making um, first I covered it in E33 and I did that because one single layer of E33 can be a little bit too light so I wanted to be able to build up that um, then I used the E37 uh, to just make like dotted shadows uh, on those uh, little scales mostly where she would have been shadowed and then I went in with the E35 and added more just shadowing on top of those dots and then added some other dots and blended that out. And for the finishing layer, uh, I think I went in with the E33, just covering everything to, to blend it together. Now I am going to detail this with some acrylic inks, so trying to get it perfectly uh, I didn't really bother to make it perfectly and I also didn't bother about the contrast because I knew that my acrylic ink would hide that contrast anyhow. So I just didn't. Um, I used the same greens on her uh, kind of clothing uh, as on her eyes just to 
get that green together. If I had thought a little bit longer, I also would have used the same greens on the pumpkin's uh, branches. Uh, but I, I colored the pumpkin first and realized that I didn't want to have those colors for her eyes. So that's how it is. For these little details, I'm using some acrylic ink in iridescent bronze. Uh, I really like this ink. Uh, I only have two acrylic inks, one white and one uh, bronze. I do love using, when I use white, do it white highlights, highlights though, I don't use my acrylic ink. I use um, either uh, some gouache that I have uh, blended out with just a little bit of water or I use my jello roll pens because they are easier and they have better coverage. Um, but for this like iridescent ink, um, I love it. And also I dipped out and gave it like three drops. I could just have had one drop because I'm not using up all of that ink. Um, and it also stays very good as long as you uh, close the cap uh, di directly. So I think I had this bottle for like three years or something. It's still in perfect condition. And um, if it continues to be that way, I can probably use it for 20 years. So even though it's a little bit more of an expensive product, uh, you can use it for a very long time. And you, you only need a very, very small amount. I have some ideas that I want to use this acrylic ink for, like backgrounds and, and background detailing and stuff like that. But uh, right now I just haven't had time to experiment with it. But I did end up just adding a little bit uh, of that here and there, both for the scales, for her upper part, and a little bit on the tail, just to give the tail some of that um, metallic glimmer too. But yeah, that is the end of my coloring for today. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you do, please a thumbs the video up. If you have no questions or comments, just leave them down below. Down below you can also find the link to my Etsy store where I have my new digital stamps which for a short time are on sale. So if you want to grab them, grab them now. Thank you again for watching. Um, if you want to see more like this, hit that subscribe button and I will see you later. Bye!